So some of the stuff in this chapter is new and some of it will be review. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking like, for example, about what a message box is. You've been using that for a while. All right. I am going to probably end up writing a program in here. And um, if you want the code later, that's fine. I would recommend just watching because we'll talk a little bit about combo boxes, check boxes, list boxes, etc. So we'll talk about that stuff. And that's what's first in the chapter. Then they talk about multi-form projects. All right, in other words, you know, what, what if I had a form that said, welcome to the project? You know what a splash screen is? You both do, right? I mean, a lot of times if you bring up software, they'll be like, you know, Mario Brothers type of thing. You know what I'm saying? And it'll, it'll show you that. And it'll show you a picture and some advertising. Boom. It fades away and the game starts or something like that. All right. Well, the point is, what if you wanted to do that? What if you wanted a splash screen so when your program started, you had something cool that came up and then it changed and it was your, you know, your game or your whatever? Or what if you asked for some information? You know, you, you, know, you said, that you said uh, what year in school are you? Are you first year or are you second year? And let's, let's just assume it's a year from now. So Dominic puts down first year because he still is. So he goes to one screen that's for first year people, and Keegan puts down second year, so he goes to a second screen because he's second year. The point is, you can have multiple forms in the same project. And there's two ways you can do that. You can literally create the form ahead of time, all right, and go from one form to the other, or you can have one form create another form on the fly. And they talk about both those in here. Then the rest of it is on the message box class. It's only two or three pages. Again, we've had that already. And then they've got some kind of an application in here that we'll take a quick look at. All right. So it says here five more types of controls. So let's take a look at each one of these new controls. Radio buttons. Okay. Right there. Group box, which is drawn around there. So radio buttons, group box, a list box right here. A check box right here. A combo box right here so let's quickly just look through and I'll make something it won't look just like this I'm not gonna say it's gonna look better it's gonna look worse it doesn't really matter it's not a contest anyway but I'm gonna come up here and create a new project and it will be a Windows Forms app okay and I'm just gonna call it uh, new controls all right So again, the idea is to create a project with all of these controls in there. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and create one of these group boxes that you see right here. A group box is just that. It allows you to group controls together. That, that's its job. All right, so I'm going to move this up here, there. I'm going to change a couple colors because I, I just like to do this so that the stuff stands out. That's all. There's nothing special about any color I'm using or anything else. There we go. Now we've got this group box. I'll make that a little bit darker, like I said, just so it stands out. There it is. All right. Now, I'm, you, when you have a group box, you typically put stuff inside of it. Should make sense. All right. So I'm going to grab a label, and I'm going to drop that label right there so it's inside of it. And I'm not worrying about changing names, okay? I mean, I would typically call this like label gender, etc. I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to put in a font that's a lot bigger. Let's make it nice and big. So 16, bold, and Arial, and uh, that's fine. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to call this gender. All right, now you see it's not all showing. We're going to fix that right now. There it is. Okay, all right. Now, let's assume that there's three different possibilities for gender. One is male, one is female, one is prefer not to answer. Okay, again, I'm just making all this stuff up. 
So I'm going over here to where it says radio button, and I'm going to drag in three of them. There's one. There's another. And there's another. Okay? Again, this is not fantastically built or anything else. But this one for the radio button, first thing I'm going to put in here for the text is let's put in female first. All right, so you can see again, we're going to have to try to come in here and change the size. I'm not sure why that's not working, but let's look. Oh, there's an auto size in here too. Okay, so let's set the auto size in here also and in here also. All right, so we've got female. Now the second one will come in here and we'll put in male. And for the last one, we'll come in here and we'll put in prefer not to answer. All right, now look, all it says is prefer. I'm going to have to stretch this out a bit. So there it is. All that makes sense. So I'm going to come in here just so it's a little bit bigger and you can see it better. All right, I'm going to come in here as I have been doing. Bless you. Play with the font. Let's make this just 12. That should be big enough. Bold and Arial. Boom. All right. Make that a little bigger here, a little bigger there, and a little bigger there. All right. So now we come in here and we run the program. And what you see is female is chosen, which is fine, but I can only choose one at a time. That's what a radio button is. It's based off the olden days when I was your age, and we had AM radio in a car, and you had five buttons that you could program. You pressed one button, and it played one station. You pressed, it, pressed another button, it would play another station, etc. That kind of an idea. All right? Any questions on that? All right. So that's two of the controls. This group box, let's do this. We'll say group box, gender, and you know what? We won't put any text in there at all. There. All right, so this, we'll give them decent names. Label gender, radio button female, radio button male and this one this is way too long a name so i'm just going to call radio button prefer all right so that's two of them that's the list box all right and those are radio buttons so radio buttons or i'm sorry group box and radio buttons all right so i'm going to now i'm going to come in here and i'm going to grab a list box put that right there that's not too bad. I'm going to drag it out so it's bigger. You don't have to do this. All right. I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to put a label right here. And this label that's right there, it's going to say label family, mem family members. All right, and the text will be family members. Okay, again, it's got to be stretched out. So I've got to set the auto size to false. That's fine. All right, now I've got two choices. I'm going to put in the people in my family. Okay, there's two ways that I can do this. I can click... Right up here, if you look up on the screen, there's actually three ways. But I can click. Do you see that little arrow that's right there? Can you see this? I can click there and type in Edit Items. Start typing them in. All 
right? So that's one way I can do it. You can see they're filled up. Make sense? All right, that's one way I can do it. If I wanted to instead, I could have clicked items over here. Instead of clicking that arrow, I could click items where it says collection, and I could click on the three dots. It brings up the same thing. Or I can do it in code so that you know, I can write it in code. But these are called items in the list box. That's literally what they're referred to as. They are list box items. And if I want to do things, if I want to add items, I do in the name of the list box, dot items, dot add. If I want to remove them, I do the name of the list box, dot items, dot remove, et cetera. All right. Hopefully that is enough where that makes enough sense to you. All right. Okay, so that's that. So, so, so far, we have discussed radio buttons, a group box, and a list box. So we've got left checkbox and combo box. Let's do the checkbox next. Um, Let's say favorite way, we're going to call that. And we're going to say here receive messages via. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to put in three. Check boxes. There's one. There's two. There's three. First check box, we'll call it checks. I'm sorry, check box USPS mail. And you can see, or you will in just a second, how that changed. This one will say, the text here will be phone. We'll call it voicemail. All right. And we'll call this one checkbox voicemail. And this last one here we'll call checkbox text and we'll change that to text I'm going to highlight all three of these and I'm going to do the auto size on them again okay you can see now they're all okay and I'm going to set the font size on them set it to 12 bold Okay, let's move this up, that up, all right. You'll notice the difference if you look up on the screen here, that when I do these, I can check none of them, or I can check one, or two, or all three. Does that make sense? All right, let's make one more, and I'm going to just call this, I'm going to keep this simple. And I'm going to make one more of these. I got enough room up here to show all this.
And finally, I'm this is maybe a dumb thing, but this is what came to mind. Year born. Okay, it didn't like there. Year born. It's telling me it doesn't like something in here. I don't know what. Name. Label. Year born. Didn't say there should be nothing wrong with that. This last one we'll put on here for text, just that, year born. All right, and just like we did before, but now we're going to have a combo box. And I'm going to put in here for editing items, uh, what, 19, a fast way to do this. Nineteen thirty. Nineteen thirty-one. Okay, grab these. Right way the heck down. Stop on twenty twenty-one. Get rid of all these. Run this one last time we're done believe it or not so let me just uh, center this if you look on the screen please see where it says you're born see that you've seen that before right so I can choose any one of these I want okay so the idea is radio buttons, you can only choose one. The choices are known as being mutually exclusive. That's the verbiage that's used. All right, list boxes, you can set it up so you can check one thing, or you can set it up so you can check multiple things. Right now it's set up to just check one. Notice that if I take and click on the list box, there's a property in here called multi-line. used to be one. Oh, selection mode. One, I'm going to change it from one to multiple extended. All right. Notice the difference that now when I run this, I can click one, hold down on shift and click, whoops, hold down on control and click another, etc. Does that make sense? All right. These are check boxes. Again, I can choose none, one, two, or three. This is a combo box. It's got drop downs, and I can check anything in here. All that makes sense? All right. Why did I do that? Well, because to me, it makes more sense to show it to you than to sit there and talk about all this stuff that's in here. All right. So you've seen all of them now. These are the different properties and, and things that you can work on with a list box in a combo box. The first item that's in there is item zero. Did you hear me? It's item zero. So if you select nothing, then the index is equal to negative one. If you select the first item in a combo box, for example, it's item zero. All right? Item is the actual item itself. 
text is the item in there. You can automatically sort these. So again, you've seen this kind of thing before. I'm just going to show it to you again anyway. And that is, if I come back here and I click on my list box, and I go down to the sorted property and I set it to true, notice it's all sorted in by name. All right, nothing special I have to do. And if I added, I don't have an Adam, but if I added Adam Scott, it would automatically jump to the top because it's an A. Okay. All right. Every time that you click and change something in one of these, a selected index changed event occurs. So you can add code there if you want to. So if you look up on the screen here, notice here they're loading a combo box with the months. I used the years. Here they have the months. And it's no big thing. You can, you can load them with strings. You can load them with numbers. You can basically do whatever you want to do. Here they're creating an array with all the months. Then they're using the add method to put them in there. So in other words, what they're doing, I added them directly into the box. They're adding them in code. Okay. All right, check boxes and radio buttons. Again, there is an example of two radio buttons. Only one can be selected at a time. The one that's selected is known as being checked. If it's a radio button or it's a checkbox, the one that you choose, or with checkboxes, the ones that you choose, that's what's checked. That's the name of the property. It's a Boolean property, meaning checked can be set to true if it's checked and false if it's not. All right. Tab order. I'm not going to go over this. Would you agree you know tab order? We've done tab order several times. All right, they show it again. I'm not going to play with that at all. All right. If you want information about any of these controls, look on the screen, please. You've seen this already. Let's just say it's, you know, uh, Dominic wants to use combo box, can't remember anything about it, clicks on the combo box, hits his F1 function key. That should bring up help on the associated class. Next, they go into the multi-form stuff. All right, how to add a form to a project? Well, let, let's look at two different ways to add a form to a project. All right, first way is the easy way. And that is, all I have to do is right mouse click on the name of the project. All right. I right mouse click on the name of the project. And I choose, come on. Add, and I go to New Item, or I can just go Add and go to Windows Form. See this? As soon as I do that, notice I come in here, I want a form. And I'm just going to call this, I don't know, Hello Form. Stupid name, but you get the idea. See that? There's another form. There it is. All right, I can now put in buttons and the like to jump back and forth between forms if I want to do that. All right? I mean, I used to do a, I, I'd make an app that we would call the All-American app. It would come up with a big form that was red. You click a button on it that said white, it would bring up another form that was white. All right? You click, there's another, you know, there's buttons on all three forms that say red, white, and blue. All right? You click another button blue, it says go to, you know, to blue, that kind of thing. All right. There's a lot of ways that this can be used, though. So that is one way to add a form to a project. That's what I just showed you. And the form that's generated when you do that is this. It's not that big a thing. It just is telling you that it's adding a new form. All right. The name you specify the form for the form in the Add New Dialog box is used by the files in the form class. Now, you don't have to do it like that, all right? Also, you, you would you agree you know how to rename stuff? All right, so again, if I didn't like this hello form, I could right mouse click on it, choose rename, call it whatever I want to call it.
how to display the first form in an application. What if, please look on the screen, what if that new one that I just created, I want that one to display first. Are you with me? I want that one to display first. Well, take a look up on the screen here. Because right now, I've got all this stuff, but one of the things that's in here is this, program.cs. And when you look in here in that file, it tells you what form you want to run first. See that? So I'm going to change that. I'm going to type in here, hello form. All right. Notice no error. See that? Now I'm going to run the program. And that's the second form that I created. Does that make sense? All right. Let's change that back so that it's just form one. All right. How to display a form as a dialog box. Okay. You can set forms up so that, for instance, you can right mouse click even and bring up a form if you want to do that. That's what they get into in here. But you, when you set up forms, you can set them up in a lot of different ways. You can read this on the screen. I don't want to read to you. If something is modal, all right, well, I didn't even talk modal here. All right, it says there if it's fixed, all right, you don't want, then the user can't make it bigger or smaller as the program's running, okay? Uh, you can play with the minimize, the maximize button, let them or not let them, okay? If indeed that's what you want to do. You can pass data between forms. That might be important, right? Okay, so if you were going to set up something where you wanted, let's say we were going to set up a shopping cart type of thing. Well, then what I want to be able to do is give you a, a page where you could pick things from a shopping, you know, put them in a shopping cart. But then I want to be able to take those items and send them to your actual, you know, where you're going to purchase them kind of an idea. And that's what they're talking about here. When you do that, you typically use a special property called tag. It's not really that big a thing, but tag, you can put all sorts of stuff in there. Anything you want to put in there, basically. The message box we've already gone over, so I'm not going to hit it. If you look, I just make sure you know you're not missing anything. We talked about the buttons. We talked about the icon. I did show you a dialog result. You can set defaults if you want for a message box. I don't like doing that, so I didn't show you that. Form close. All right, this is another way that you can close a form. I did the application.exit. They show here on 315 another way you can do it. All right, there's just multiple ways of doing the same thing. And the chapter ends with this payment application. So they write this thing. It's got three forms on it. Okay. And that you can sit there and take a look at. Again, what you do in here will, will um, have some effect on what you do in here. You probably guess if you credit card... Okay, it'll show you different credit card options, right? But if it's bill me, why would it show you credit card things? Or if it did, it would gray them out, that type of an idea. So anything then that's in here is grayed out in here. Why? Because here we chose bill, here we chose credit card. And they write the program. Not going to go through it any more than that give you the code, etc. That's it. All right. So let me grab this. It's about a half an hour. That's about what I thought it would take.